Hello to you all. We are explaining the entire book of Tehillim. And Tehillim was written by King David, the beautiful one who has wrote this book. And he wrote it with Holy Spirit. And he wrote it through prophecy. And in every one of the Psalms, every one of the chapters, he conveys a different message for himself, for us, for all ages, for all times. And this book has been accepted throughout the world. And right now, we are on chapter 39, which speaks about a special prayer of how can a person remove from himself all kind of suffering so that we can acquire the next world through Torah, mitzvot, umasim tovim, through the, the acting and learning of Torah, through good deeds, and through keeping the commandments of the Torah. And each Tehillim also got a segula. Segula means a certain charm, a certain way. If you got anyone that is in any kind of relationship with you, which is not pleasant, to say the least, where you find animosity against you in court, in business, in your personal life, or internally with your Yetzirah, with your own evil inclination, this Tehillim, this chapter 39, is an incredible chapter to read through with real intention so that you can remove from your life internally or externally those enemies that you have facing you. And I will use one of the chosen verses in the Psalm, which is verse 7, and I will say it in the Hebrew, and I'll explain it. Ach betzelem italechish. Each one of us was created in the image of God. And that image of God allows us to understand what is the most important thing in this world. We are called Adam, which is the Hebrew word for man, Adam. And it comes from the word demion. We use the Im imaginary power within us, imagination, to pull ourselves and to walk in the image of God, rather than gets drawn to those materialistic aspects, which is called Adama, earthly matters. Most people throughout their life make more and more money, which is wonderful to make money, but it's got a purpose. But if the whole purpose is for competition, is to acquire more, is to have more materialism, but to know at the end, then gathering it, says King David, who was very rich, who fought many wars, who prepared the ground to build the temple in Jerusalem through his son, King Solomon, Shlomo. You will gather that all your life, but you will never know who is going to actually enjoy the fruits of all your gathering. You won't get them. So rather enjoy what you do. Material, capitalize on it. Bring out from there some kind of spirituality and value into your everyday life. And the other verse, which I have chosen here, is verse 13, which says, when we pray to God, please God, see my tear, don't turn a blind eye or a blind ear. And if we make ourselves and we understand that we are spiritual beings, having a physical experience in this world, well, then God is going to dwell with us. If you're going to do it the other way around, and we are permanently re re residing in this world, as permanent residents, engrossed into the materialism, then God is going to be only a temporary, fleeting experience for us. And the whole point of life is, one, is to acknowledge the existence of God, secondly, to have a relationship with Him, and that in that relationship, we can actually acquire anything we want and become His agent and save Him in this world. God bless you all and have a great day.